muscles and the deep fascia of the neck. The first muscle is sternomastoid muscles. The sternomastoid muscle takes origin by two heads. Sternal head arises from the anterior surface and the upper part of the manubrium sterni, while the clavicular head arises from the upper surface of the medial third of the clavicle. Insertion of the sternomastoid muscle into the lateral surface of the mastoid process of the skull and the lateral half of the superior nuchal line. The nerve supply motor supply from the spinal root of the accessory nerve while proprioceptive supply or sensory supply from second cervical nerve. Action of the sternomastoid muscle. If one muscle acting alone, it bends the head to the same side and rotates the face towards the opposite side. While of both muscles acting together, they bend the head forwards and flex the neck. It raises the clavicle and the sternum during deep inspiration. This is the sternomastoid muscle. Takes the origin from the sternum and upper surface of the medial part of the clavicle. Inserted into the mastoid process and the supernuchal line of the skull. Then scalene muscles, we have three scalene muscles. Number one, scalenus anterior, which takes the origin from transverse processes of the cervical vertebrae from third to the sixth cervical vertebra. Insertion into the scalene tubercle on the upper surface of the first rib. The scalenus medius muscle takes the origin from the transverse process of all cervical vertebrae, while insertion in the posterior part of the upper surface of the first rib also. The scalenus posterior muscle takes the origin from the transverse processes of the lower cervical vertebrae and inserted into the second rib. The nerve supply for the scalene muscles from lower five cervical nerves. Action bends the neck to the same side and also used in forced inspiration. This is the scalene muscles, scalenus anterior, inserted in the first rib. Scalenus medius, inserted also in the posterior part of the first rib. And this is the scalenus posterior, inserted in the second rib. This is the scalene muscles again, scalenus anterior, this is scalenus medius, and this is scalenus posterior. As we mentioned before, the scalenus anterior takes the origin from the anterior tubercle of transverse processes, from cervical 3 to 6, and inserted into the scalene tubercle of the first rib. Nerve supply from lower cervical nerves. Elevation of the first rib and bends the neck to the same side used in forced inspiration. Scalenus medius takes origin from the posterior tubercle of all cervical vertebrae inserted into to the upper surface of the first rib behind the groove for subclavian artery. Nerve supply lower cervical nerves elevate the first rib and forced inspiration. Scalenus posterior again takes origin from posterior tubercles of transverse processes of the lower cervical vertebrae inserted into the upper surface of the second rib. Nerve supply also from lower cervical nerves elevates the second rib and forced inspiration. Relations of the scalenus anterior muscle. First anterior relation is the sternomastoid muscle phrenic nerve since between the muscle and its fascia, intermediate tendon of omohyoid muscle, suprascapular and transverse cervical arteries, subclavian vein anterior and anterior jugular vein. This is the scalenus anterior muscle, anterior relation this is the phrenic nerve and this is subclavian vein anterior while the subclavian artery posterior. The 
posterior relation of the scalenus anterior muscle. Number one, scalenus medius, roots of the brachial plexus, subclavian artery, and cervical pleura and the apex of the lung. Then, prevertebral muscle. These are small muscles present in front of the cervical and the upper thoracic vertebrae and covered by prevertebral fascia. They include longus coli, longus capitis, and rectus capitis anterior. This is the prevertebral muscles. This is the longus capitis, and this is the longus coli muscle. Then infrahyoid muscles, sternohyoid, number one, omohyoid, sternothyroid, thyrohyoid. As regards the sternohyoid muscle, takes the origin from the posterior surface of the maniobrium sterni and they inserted into the lower border of the body of the hyoid bone. Nervous supply from ansa cervicals. Action, depression of, of the elevated hyoid bone. Omohyoid muscle has two bellies, inferior belly from the upper border of the scapula, the superior belly from the hyoid bone. Insertion, both bellies inserted into the intermediate tendon. Nervous supply also ansa cervicalis. Action, depression of the hyoid bone after being elevated in swallowing. Sternothyroid muscle takes origin from the back of maniobrium sterni inserted into the oblique line of thyroid cartilage also nervous supply from ansa cervicalis action depression of the larynx after being elevated in swallowing thyrohyoid muscle takes origin from the oblique line of thyroid cartilage inserted into the lower border of hyoid bone Sublud from cervical one through hypoglossal nerve, the action, elevation of the larynx, and depression of the hyoid bone. This is the infrahyoid muscles. This is omohyoid, superior belly of omohyoid, inferior belly, and this is the intermediate tendon. This is the sternohyoid muscle. Then sternothyroid, and this is the thyrohyoid. Deep fascia of the neck. The deep fascia of the neck subdivided into two different parts. Number one, general investing fascia, which cover the neck completely. It lies deep to the superficial fascia and envelops the neck completely. Attached upward to the lower border of the mandible. And blue, it is attached to the clavicle and the maniobrium sterni. Posteriorly, the fascia directed backward to reach the ligamentum nuca and attach it to it. Anteriorly continuous with the opposite side in the midline. The second is pre-tracheal fascia, which covers the front and the sides of the trachea and includes the thyroid gland. The third is prevertebral fascia, which covers the prevertebral muscles and continuous laterally with the fascia of the floor of the posterior triangle. Fourth, retrovertebral, which covers the retrovertebral muscles at the back of the neck. Fifth is bacopharyngeal fascia, which covers the vaccinator muscle and the outer surface of the constrictors of the pharynx. Number six, is the carotid sheath, it is a tube of fascia, Extending from the base of the skull to the root of the neck. The contents, internal jugular vein laterally, common carotid and internal carotid arteries medially. Vagus nerve in between the internal jugular vein and carotid arteries. Then sympathetic chain embedded in the posterior wall of the carotid sheath. This is transverse section of the neck, showing the deep fascia of the neck. First is general investing layer covering the neck completely. This is investing layer. The second is this is a pre-tracheal fascia and this is prevertebral fascia and this is carotid sheath. 